All right, crewman here. Guys, I'm finally going to start building my budget 1440 PC rig. So I'll, I'm gonna try something different this time. I'm gonna show you how I build it. Uh, I'll do some cuts. So you'll just see me like with the part actually in and then I'll go over what was on, you know, what I did and if anything interesting happened or if I had any difficulties. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this the next time you see it. I'm going to have the power supply and the motherboard in. We're going to go now. Well, and let's talk about the case. Um, and let me talk about my opinion on cases for budget builds and what you should do. So this is an NZXT case. Uh, I think it's an H... The, the larger one, I actually don't even know the model. So how I got this is I have a buddy who owns a PC shop and people come in all the time and sell them, you know, they sell them their PCs and you can't exactly ship these things or they're not worth it. So, you know, I have them on the lookout and I say, if you get a good case, let me know. Something's better than scrapping it. So he called me and said, he's just got a PC. And I said, what kind of case is it? NZXT. And I said, how much? He said, 20 bucks. So that leads me to my point about buying cases, right? You, you don't even need a case, theoretically. I will be posting a video, probably in the next week or two, of my one of my PCs that actually is just on an open airframe. It doesn't even have a case. I don't think it needs one, and I won't get one. And I digress. Um, you can literally go to any PC repair shop, any kind of technology place, and you can just ask them, like, hey, do you have any cases lying around, and what will you sell them for, if you want a case? And you would be surprised what you could find. You know, you might have to go more than once. You might have to be lucky. But, you know, in these budget builds, every penny counts. And I think this thing goes for, you know, like 100 to 120 on eBay or any other sites that don't, you know, and you hope they offer free shipping. So, you know, that $80 difference in, in terms of this build was the motherboard and the RAM and the CPU. Um, obviously, not everybody's going to get things for that cheap. But, you know, every little bit counts. And all you have to do is give a case a little bit of TLC and it's good to go. And, you know, case screws are easy to get. Uh, as you can see here, I literally have bags full of them. So, you know, come, an incomplete case is not a big deal. But that is how I would shop for cases. So I have well. the motherboard and CPU just screwed in. Um, so I wanted to take this time to explain the motherboard and the CPU and the cooler and why I chose them. So... I chose a Ryzen 5 3600. Um, when I was mapping out this build and what I thought I wanted to do, one of the things I was looking at is what is the cheapest AM4 or Intel socket that is PCIe Gen 4. And the 3600 actually supports Gen 4. And that's one of the big things you, you need in a CPU right now, I think, especially with my target, which is 1440p gaming. So I'm not as heavily CPU bound. Um, so full disclaimer, I you know I was planning on trying to spend about fifty to sixty bucks for one, maybe seventy, but probably like in the fifty to sixty dollar range. To be quite honest with you, I came across a bargain where I found one with two broken pins for twenty five dollars, and I repaired them. Now, I will say that you know this isn't something that just anybody can do. I personally think a lot of people could do it if they wanted to, but there are plenty of reasons why people could not do it. So I will probably. I'll put two prices in the, you know, when I come out with the final total and one of, you know, one of them will be what you buy this for used and the other one will be what I paid for it. Um, now, one of the reasons that I, you, another reason I picked up this cooler was also it will work with the stock uh, AMD cooler from the 5600X. You can get those for like $10 or sometimes people will literally just send them to you because they want them out of your house. I have a bunch of these left over from buying parts, builds, whatever. So, you know, I guess you could put it in for $10 if you really wanted to. So, you know, that's what I'll list it as. Um, but it'll work just fine. It, you know, will it, will it get a little hot? It might, but I'm, you know, I'm okay with that because, uh, you know, I, I really don't care to be honest with you. Uh, it's a budget PC. We're going for the best value and sometimes sacrifices have to be made. Now, if it causes thermal throttling, then we can talk about replacing it, which you know, which I could do. Now, let's move on to the motherboard. So, with this, uh, with the 3600, I was always going to pair it with an X570. And the reason is, in order to get PCIe Gen 4 on this CPU, you needed at least an X570. 
A B550 or a B5, or, you know, a B450 wouldn't work because it doesn't have enough lanes. I did not know that going into this. So that was that was interesting. You know, you learn something new every day when it comes to PC building. Um, the target price for one of these, I was looking at about yeah, hundred and eighty to one hundred and twenty. I was trying to find it in the eighty dollar range. I wasn't having too much luck. One hundred dollars was about where I was seeing them, which is fine. Uh, I got lucky where um, someone in my Discord sent me a message saying, "Hey, I've got one of these boards. Um, this thing, the um, the the bracket to secure it is a little loose, so I'll sell it to you for fifty. And I said, "Sure, uh, not a problem." Now, I would recommend anybody buying something like that if they could get, you know, a price reduction on it um, because that's an easy fix. Honestly, you just slide it in and you screw it in really, really tight. And if you have to, you buy a CPU bracket or you buy a GPU mounting bracket. So I would very, very much recommend trying to find things like or like if they say, hey, there's like a bent pin down here somewhere where you could easily fix it. Or even if, say... They said the front I.O. is broken or, or, you know, not the front I.O., like the front audio jack is broken or something that you, you don't need when you're going budget. Things like that literally do not matter. I am, I am not using 90% of the features on this motherboard. Again, I, I was very specific about the reason I bought it, and it was for PCIe Gen 4. So, so yeah, I will be right back with the power supply. We move on to the CPU. I'm just going to give you the back of this. Halfway through cable managing it. Cool thing about buying used uh, cases, this guy just, uh, he actually didn't do a half bad job cable managing this, so it makes my life a little easier. Anyway, the, C the PSU and why I chose it. So look at online, 650 watt used, you can get it anywhere between 30 and 40, plus or minus shipping sometimes. Um, with the graphics card that we're using, I really didn't feel like it was, uh, it was necessary to get anything bigger and with the CPU we're using as well uh, going back to the front here even if you take into consideration the upgrade path right we won't need to fill this third CP or this third four pin as we're never gonna overclock this thing uh, it's 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 not gonna get overclocked there's no reason to um, and the next path the next path to upgrade for this would be either a 5800 x3d if we wanted to leave the budget space or um, a 5600X with. Um, so, you know, 650 watt is fine. I doubt you'll need to go higher. Um, the GPU, which we'll get to in a minute, is a 6800, an ARC 6800, which is basically somewhere between a 3070 and a 3080. I honestly don't think you need to upgrade that. And even if you did want to upgrade that to like a 3080, um, which, or, or an ARC 6800 XT, which again, I don't, I don't think it's needed, but if you did, you could undervolt them and make them work on a 650 watt CP or power supply. And I don't think you would go any higher. I mean, th this case could fit something higher and you could, but in that case, you just, you just buy a new power supply because if you're going any higher than that, you're going to need 850 plus. And you know, if you're going higher than that, you're not playing in the budget space anymore. So I think, uh, 750 was not worth the extra money because you know, every dollar counts and 650 will give you more than you need. And it gives you some upgradability down the line if, if you'd like to take it there. For the RAM, we have two options, actually. And there's a small, quick story behind it. Um, this is an RGB pair of G-Skill 3600, 36, or uh, CL16 timing RAM. Uh, when I bought the hard drive, or I'm sorry, when I bought the motherboard, the guy basically said, um, I have this RAM. I don't know if it works. My buddy said it doesn't work under load. They tested it on multiple builds, and it doesn't work. And I said... Yeah, I'll take it, and if I can get it working, I'll, you know, I'll toss you some money down the line. He said, okay, sure. So, uh, the jury's still out on whether it works. I um, I tried it, and I stress tested it. It would be the most controversial, and probably the second ugliest part of the case is the hard drives. So, hard drives are interesting. The price of hard drives currently is going down quite a bit. I actually just missed a deal for a Samsung 980 Evo one gigabyte SSD for 40 bucks. As you can tell, I was quite upset. Uh, I missed that. I was going to pick probably one or two of those up for myself. Um, they're great. They're great. Uh, I would recommend at least SSDs for your boot drive and your game drive. I went with uh, two 240s. I got them for you know 15 bucks each. So they're actually just old mining hard drives that I had lying around. Hence, they've got labels on them. Um, 
you know, if I whenever I sell PCs, I never sell the hard drives in them unless they're wiped. You know, unless they're there's something I've never used or I'm selling to a close friend. So basically, I never sell them. So I wouldn't sell these anyway. Um, they're just gonna stay with me. Uh, so they're 15 bucks each. One for gaming, one for your hard drive, one for your Windows drive. Um, you know, if you wanted to make this a cleaner build and you could find a good deal, you could probably find some cheap M.2s to put in. You know, these were just what I had on hand and they cost the same, basically the same as a cheap M.2. Um, you know, speeds on these, are they important? It depends who you ask, to be honest with you. That is one of the things I'm going to be testing when I start, you know, putting this computer through the paces. I want to see if these are going to hold up for what I want them to do or if you're going to see me upgrading these in the future. So, uh, guys, so here's the finished build. Now, things don't always work out the way you plan. I originally had a 6800 non-XT that was going to go in here and it was going to be part of my uh, $300 budget 1440p build and I was super pumped about it however there are some issues with that 6800 and for now we're going to scrap that project in total everything cost me 220 dollars for this whole thing now the caveat aside is I did repair the CPU so if we actually use the full value of the 3600 you're looking at 260 for this whole PC now the plan with this is to be used as a test bench for some graphics cards and for some future content. So I will plan on uh, swapping out the 650 power supply with an 850 and you add about an extra, I want to say $20 in value to it. So the total will theoretically be 280 for this whole thing, which is frankly incredible when you consider that it is literally everything but the graphics card so uh i will be using this pc a lot in future test videos um but i really just wanted to show how you can build a very uh, i would say this is a mid-range pc at the very least uh it is easily upgradable to swap the um the ryzen 3600x which i valued at 60 dollars 60 to 65 dollars you can swap this out with a 5600X for, let's say, 110 and you have yourself a top-of-the-line gaming PC. I truly believe that the Ryzen 5600X is the standard for gaming PCs when it comes to price to performance to value right now. So anyway, I just wanted to share this build with you, explain to you the choices I made, why I did it, and how it, how it came out. Um, I will be using this build as uh, as my test bench in the future and i will be putting quite a few gpus on it so please stay tuned uh, i hope you enjoyed this content so i will be doing a lot more pc builds of this type in the future i love budget builds i love hunting for parts and i'm going to show you guys how to do it in future videos so again please like and subscribe crew man out